Yo, how's it going guys? It's Abs here and welcome back to another Gears of War lore video. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the Locust military ranking, the Locust religion, the Locust Cantor scrolls, the Locust language, and much more explained. So as always, if you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on all post notifications so you don't miss another lore video. And yeah, sit back, relax, and let's dive deep into the Locust lore. So firstly, let's talk about the Locust military ranking. So right at the top, you'd of course have Queen Mira. She is the boss. The Locust Horde serve her. And she is of course number one. And then we have the military. So the highest rank is Uzil, which means High General. And an example of this would of course be General Ram. And then below that, we have the rank Zamil, which is just General. And an example of this would be Zamil Khan. And then we have Theron, so Theron's are commanders, and of course, these are Theron guards. And then below that we have Krav, which is captain, and an example of that would be Krav Jamad. And then the rank below that would be Vold, which would be a lieutenant, and an example of this would be Vold Ram before Emergence Day, when he had his own blight of locust drones and boomers, and this was during the Lambent War. And then we also have Verl, which is sergeant. And an example of this would be Verl Jamad before E-Day. So this was before Jamad was promoted to Krav. And Verl Jamad at the time was in Vold Ram's Blight. And then below that we have Marg, which is private. An example of this would be Marg Prax, who were just a locust drone. Just your standard locust drone really. And a lot of the locust standard drones would be Margs. So that's the private rank there. And then we also have Religious. So we would have Kita, which is High Priest. An example of this would be Kita Scourge. And then we'd also have the Acolytes, who are of course the Cantus Monks. One thing to note is that the Cantus Monks, they're actually field commanders as well, as they bolster and inspire the Locust Drones and other Locust Troops. So you could say in a way that they are the same rank as Theron, because they are both field commanders. And another thing to note is that after the death of General Ram during the Light Mass Offensive, Kita Scourge acted as a High Priest and as the High General. So Kita Scourge during Operation Hollow Storm, he was Uzil, but he was Kita as well. But we just knew him as Kita Scourge really. And then we also had the lead scientist Ukon. He doesn't really fit into the military, he was just like political. He had a place in the Locust Council but he would have had his own blights of locust drones and enhanced locust troops that he was working and experimented on, such as the zealots and the disciples. So that's Ukon right there as well. So those were the locust military ranks that were used before Emergence Day and of course throughout the locust war. But after the sinking of Jacinto City, when the savage locusts were created, they seemed to reject the locust military ranking. So the savage locust, they were former members of the locust horde, who survived the flooding of the hollow and they reverted into a feral state without the guidance of their queen. When the Jacinto city was sunk underground by the coalition of ordered governments, the entire inner hollow was flooded, killing a majority of the locust horde by drowning before they could evacuate the hollow. So those on the surface, they survived and they splintered into two factions. So you had the locust without Queen Mira's guidance, they reverted to a tribal and nomadic way of life, while the locust guarding Queen Mira, they maintained guidance and direction, becoming the Queen's Guard. So of course the Queen's Guard, they maintained the military ranking, but the savage locust didn't. The savage locust were less organised and were without a hive mentality. The savage locust appeared to follow some of the original ways of the locust, however there are many differences between the two factions. While the Locust Horde was organised and each class had a unique purpose on the battlefield, the Savage Locust appeared to follow no organisation and they use any weapons they can scavenge. They also appeared to follow no hierarchy as both Savage Cantus and Therons seemed to act as cannon fodder, something that only drones and boomers did in the Queen's army. So in the Queen's Guard, the Locust Horde's Theron Guards and the Cantus, like I said, they would have acted as field commanders. And of course, their own guards, they would be regarded as the elite locust troops. But the savage locust, they didn't seem to follow any form of hierarchical structure with troops such as the savage boomer, savage grenadier, savage cantus, savage theron, etc. all being at the same level. And despite their abandonment of several of the locusts ways, the savage locust still kept a deep hatred for humanity and would kill any human being who dared enter their territory and they would often use their charred corpses as a warning for any intruders. Also, in the Locust military, so the Queen's Guard of Locust soldiers, 
some of the subclasses would actually have different rankings as well. So the Locust Drones, they were of course the foot soldiers of the Locust Horde. They had different classes specialising in different forms of combat and they were the standard infantry of the Locust Horde. But the Locust Grenadiers were a rank up from the drones, they were the Locust Shock Troopers and they were stronger and more aggressive than the Locust Drones. But the Theron Guards, who were of course the commanders, they were higher ranking than the Grenadiers, they represented the elite Locust troops, they were head and shoulders above the drones in terms of equipment, intelligence and training. So the Theron Guards, they were the elite form of Locust troops. Now the Locust Grenadiers, they would have different rankings in their subclass as well. So of course you'd have the standard Locust Grenadiers, they were the Locust Shock Troopers and they were stronger and more aggressive than the drones. And then you'd have the Locust Grenadier Elites, who were the higher rank of the standard Grenadier. They could take and deal a lot more damage and they appeared to be much more seasoned combat operatives compared to the standard Grenadier. And then you'd have the Locust Ravagers. Now the Locust Ravagers were the highest ranking subclass of Grenadier. They made up of the most brutally strong and tremendously resilient Grenadiers. Now the elite Locust troops, their own guards, they actually had their own ranking as well. So you'd have the standard Theron Guards who were the commanders, then you'd have the Theron Sentinel. So when you'd see a pack of Theron Guards, the Theron Sentinel would be the leader of that small team. And then you'd have the Theron Elites. Now this was a co-organisation of the Locust Therons. They specifically trained and worked under the command of General Ram, who of course was the Uzil at the time, serving as his chosen warriors and sometimes loyal lieutenants. So that's Locust military ranking explained. But we also have the Locust religion. Now the Locust Horde's religion revolved around the worship of worms. Yes, worms. <laughs> so the Rift Worms and the Rock Worms are viewed as highly significant creatures in the Locust religious texts. The Trinity of Worms was the symbol and title of the Locust Horde's religion, symbolising and revering the Rift Worms as gods. So the Rift Worms were a species of massive subterranean worms, reaching a confirmed maximum length of 10 miles and width of half a mile. They were the largest and oldest animal known to have existed on the planet Sera. They were semi-intelligent creatures capable of century-long hibernation. The Riftworms created the Hollow, which was a complex underground network of tunnels by burrowing through the crust of Sera. Leaving a rich manure in their path, it fertilized the soil and created life within the Hollow, which was later termed as the Hollow by the humans and it created life underground. An ecology of plant and animal life evolved in the hollow, with many of the creatures being reptilian in nature, which was just like the riftworm. And among the life forms created in the hollow by the riftworm was emulsion. Because emulsion was actually a living organism, it was a parasitic fungus that was capable of infecting, mutating and possessing any living organism. And just a side note that in the temple of the trinity, there were pictures of three riftworms, but we of course only saw one Riftworm, which was during Operation Hollow Storm. So it remains unknown what actually happened to the remaining two Riftworms on Sarah. Their fate remains unknown after the flooding of the Hollows and the Emotion Countermeasure Weapons activation. Now it could be possible that they drowned in the flooding of the Hollows, since they wouldn't have actually been awake to escape. But to be honest, the anatomy of the other two Riftworms may have been a lot different compared to the Gears 2 Riftworm, so we shouldn't really jump to that conclusion. So we don't know if the other two Riftworms are still alive or not. I just really hope they expand the lore when it comes to those two Riftworms in the future. And of course, there were three Riftworms. That's why the Locust religion was called the Trinity of Worms. Only three Riftworms have been known to exist, and at some point in the Gears of War timeline, all three Riftworms went dormant in the Hollow. So during the Locust War, one of the Riftworms was awakened by the light mass bomb that the Coalition of Board Governments used to destroy the Outer Hollows. So this Riftworm was awakened and was used by Keter Scourge as a weapon of mass destruction capable of sinking entire cities. So the last known Riftworm was killed in 14 AE. Now the Cantus Monks are the religious priests of the Locust and Aracast level. So the Cantus Monks had the Cantus Scrolls. So these were ancient Cantus writings that are the code of the Cantus. The scrolls contained verses and mantras that explained how to communicate with the Riftworms and the Rockworms. With the rulers of the Nexus Plates tablet being Locust's main religious tome, 
which told the history of the hollows, explaining how the riftworms burrowed underground and created the vast underground network and left their waste behind, which fertilized the soil of the surface of Sarah. Also, another thing to note is that the Kansas monks were an ancient species that lived in the hollow long before the actual locust horde. So we can assume they actually knew and studied the history of the hollow really well, but their backstory is still pretty unknown as to why and how they were recruited into the Lokes military in the first place, and if they were welcome into the Lokes drones and mirror at first when they entered the hollow. So Lokes Horde's main religious book was the rulers of Nexus Plates, are also known as the Lokes Tablets, and one copy of the tome was discovered by Delta One during Operation Hollow Storm. And according to the high priests of the Lokes Horde, the sires are also revered as holy figures, and they are seen as divine incubators evolved from the riftworms. And some copies of the Cantor scrolls are used with human skin fitted in between the rollers, which is absolutely crazy, and with the religious text written on them with ink. So moving away from the Locust religion, let's talk about the Locust language. So the Locust had their own writing system as well, which was referred to as the Locust runes. So the Locust runes were based on a lexigram used by scientists of the Mount Kadar laboratory to communicate with the original generation of Locust. The system consisted of symbols which represented individual letters and ideograms that represented full words based on the Tyran language. The writing system's alphabet contained 26 symbols for 26 letters and the numbering system contained 10 numbers that was represented by 10 symbols. Now there was also a computerized version of the Locust writing system which could be seen on the Locust computer terminals. These symbols are cleaner and more identifiable than the handwritten symbols and the most notable examples of the computerized Locust alphabet are found on Locust computer terminals and the Locust invasion map. As for the relationship with human languages and writing systems, there are 21 confirmed ideograms that represented Tyran words. As a spoken language, the official language of the Locust Horde was also Tyran. However, the Locust Horde created several words in their own languages. Many of them were associated with a Tyran word, but when directly translated, is meant as something else. For instance, the rankings in the Locust army, such as Marg, Verl, Vold, Krav, Zamil and Uzil are meant as Private, Sergeant, Lieutenant, Captain, General and High General. However, the direct translations of the Locust ranks starting from the bottom are Virgin, Dirty, Battered, Bloodied, Gored and Unbroken. Now the Locust also had a calendar system which was their way of basically depicting the seasons and months on Sarah. So the Locust's calendar system was based on emulsion flowing through the hollows. Within the calendar system, there are 12 seasons, each with opposites. Because you gotta remember that this is the planet Sarah, not Earth, right? So the days on Sarah are longer, there are different seasons, etc. So each full rotation of the calendar was referred to as a cycle and matched that of the regular Saren year. So one cycle of the Locust calendar was also one year of the Saren calendar. So the translation of the symbols clockwise, so these are basically the 12 seasons for the Locust calendar system, which is Queen, Fire, Drone, Leviathan, Danger, Nemesis, Emulsion, Water, Human, Krill, Secure, and Cedar. So every season has its opposite as well. So the queen season has the opposite of emulsion. The fire season's opposite is water. The drone season opposite is human. The leviathan season's opposite is krill. The danger season's opposite is secure. And the nemesis season's opposite is cedar. Additionally, the Locust Horde had many objects to represent their society, culture and religion as well as their people. So Queen Mira had her own symbol, which all members of her guard always carried with them. But the Savage Locust appeared to have rejected this symbol. The Locust also produced jewellery such as emblems that are referred to just as the Locust emblem. Damon Baird, in an intelligence report, theorised that the Locust either kept track of their fallen soldiers, just like the Coalition of Ordered Governments did, or they just had a bad taste in jewellery. The Locust also produced human finger necklaces, so... Yeah, these guys did have poor taste in jewellery for sure. Now I also want to talk about Locust military's tactics and strategies. So despite the drone's tendency to charge right into battle, the Locust are far from mindless. 
In fact, it can be argued that many of the high-ranking leaders of the Logs Tord were considered to be geniuses in terms of military strategy. The assumption that locusts are little more than mindless beasts greatly hindered the COG's initial efforts to combat them. Now while the individual drone's intelligence was in fact questionable, prominent locust commanders such as Khan, General Ram and Scourge displayed great cunning and strategy. The gears in the battlefield often attributed unexpected and surprising tactics from the locust. Now while the locust did use a variety of strategies to keep their enemies off balance, their most infamous tactic was the use of emergence holes, or also known as e-holes, to deliver their forces directly into battle. Since emergence day, these holes have proven themselves to be the one thing the cog could never predict or prevent, giving the locust superior advantage over their enemies, as they could never predict where or when e-holes would emerge. The emergence holes, in addition to quickly delivering their forces, had a heavy psychological effect on enemies, since they allowed the locusts to attack nearly anywhere at any time without warning. Also, though the locusts made their own weapons, armor, and vehicles, they also took their enemies' weapons and vehicles as spoils of war. Among the weapons they used from slain enemies were Lancer assault rifles, Nasher shotguns, longshot sniper rifles, and sometimes modified them with crude attachments and paint jobs to create weapons like the Breach Shot. They gathered all available civilian and military hardware from the cities that they invaded. The supplies and hardware are collected and the autoports are salvaged from the wreckage. So when it comes to the Locust weaponry, the Locust weaponry is fairly conventional, with a few notable exceptions. Both versions of the Hammerburst rifle work in much the same way as a human-made rifle would, and the Baltok pistol has a standard revolver design. Others are deviations from standard human designs, such as the boom shot grenade launcher. The Locust also favour the use of captured human weapons, such as the Nasher shotgun and the Lancer assault rifle. Certain weapons like the Torque Bow possess a more unique design, however. So the Torque Bow is unlike any contemporary human weapon. Its design is based around a crossbow, but combines a mechanical action that gives the arrow rotational energy. This gives the arrow a longer effective range, and vastly improved accuracy over a standard bow and arrow. The arrowhead contains an explosive emulsion charge, as evidenced by the glowing of the arrowheads, which makes it an incredibly powerful weapon. So this design is completely unique to the Locust Horde. The Locust grenades are also very distinctive. For instance, the ink grenade is especially notable because it combines the unique weapon design of the Locust with their use of their species variants. Because the ink grenade is actually a baby nemesis housed in a grenade casing. Due to their subterranean existence and until emergent state, the Locust Horde had developed technology that is vastly different to human technology. Notably, they make use of living creatures in the place of machines. The hollows of Sera are populated with an abundance of large animal life, and Locusts have domesticated many species for use as vehicles and war beasts. For instance, the corpses are used to dig the tunnels that the locusts use to travel beneath the planet's surface. The Brumax carry Troika turrets and a rocket launcher into battle. The Cedars are used as artillery and jamming devices. The Reavers are used as airborne gunships and light infantry support roles. Nemesis are ammunition for the Cedars and a component of certain explosives. Mangler fish drive their gunboats and an unidentified insectoid creature propels their processing barges. And on the surface, the locusts use gas barges propelled by an enormous floating creature as transportation and fire support platforms. However, the locusts do have some machine technology. There are levers and switches all over Nexus that open doors and activate cover. There are also lifts and a cable car system that appear to be driven by mechanical means. So despite seeming primitive, the Locusts have a considerable grasp of computer technology. There are numerous computer terminals dotted throughout the inner hollows and nexus. These computers are used for a variety of functions, such as cataloging prisoners and as a broadcast system. The Locusts also seem to have a grasp of basic electronics and have invented their own version of the microphone. However, there does not seem to be any evidence of robotics in the hollow though. But it has been confirmed from COG DNA analysis that Brumax have been bred from smaller native apes, so it is unknown what kind of technology was used to actually do this, or how it was even done. 
but it shows that Logst have mastered artificial selection and they used it for their war effort. It is not currently known whether other Logst creatures came about by the same means or if they are actually natural occurrences. But one thing is for sure that there were many Logst hollow creatures that actually did live in the hollow prior to Logst Horde's existence. It's just the case that Logst Horde bred, manipulated and used a lot of these hollow creatures for transportation, for weaponry and so on. And the Logst Horde had various forms of specialised armour for combat roles. These range from stripped down armour for the Grenadier and Grenadier Elites so they can manoeuvre better in close quarters combat all the way to helmets that can aid snipers in killing gears. But I'll be breaking down all these different types of drones that are used for different types of combat in a future video. So there you have it guys, there's the Locust military ranks, the Locust religion, the Locust language, technology, canter scrolls and so much more discussed in this video. So if you did enjoy this video be sure to drop a like and comment down below with your thoughts on everything discussed in the video and subscribe for more lore related content and be sure to check out my playlist for more Gears of War lore content and I hope you guys have a great day and I will catch you next time.